Sable is just another bottom feeder student known to have the worst grades in the entire Royal Magic Academy in the Kingdom of Wenius. Although he claims to have no memory of his time before attending the Academy, Sable possesses an intrinsic affinity for magic and just could be the next great mage in all of Wenius. For now, he still thinks of himself as a depressive bum with nowhere to go and no future. On a dark night, a white-haired witch finds Sable sitting in an alleyway on a rainy day with a look of despair on his face. She takes him in and admits him into the academy so he can learn the ropes around becoming a mage. Three years pass by and Sable still looks the same as before he was admitted. One bright school day, he gets summoned to the headmaster's office for a meeting. On getting there, he finds the 300-year-old Dawn Witch, Luke's Christus, ranting in front of Albus's office and shouting at her to present herself. Sable inches closer to the headmaster's door and meets the witch. On seeing him, Christus urges him to try knocking the headmasters, hoping she would answer him. Sable tells her she probably won't and Christus gets desperate. She pulls out her magic scythe, Laudens, and places it near Sable's throat. She plans to threaten him so Albus would have no choice but to show her face. One of the students there, a wolf beast fallen, sees Christus holding Sable at a sight point. He attacks her and throws her staff out of her hands. Sable walks over to pick it up, but they quickly stop him from doing that. When the hubbub dies down, the headmaster shows her face. Albus invites everyone to her office for the meeting with Sable. She congratulates Sable for developing himself at the school and tells him she'd like to send him on a quest to create a new environment so he can learn something new. Due to the strike between the church and the witches, human beings launched special operations to search for and capture witches in their locale. This tradition has been going on for ages up until 10 years ago when a witch they call 13 stood up against the witch hunters and put an end to them once and for all. Even after he was captured and killed, the world still looked at witches as bad creatures. Albus plans to change that by creating the academy. Still, it wasn't enough. So, she wants Sable to go on a trip, with three other mages, to a land far in the forest so he could create a village where magic is accepted with him being the mage there. This aptitude is to go on for three years. If Sable fails to create the village within the given time frame, his knowledge and memories of the trip would be sealed away in the academy. Christus tells her she'll be accompanying Sable on his journey, provided that she's allowed to search for the Grimoire Zero and probably meet its author on the way. Albus reluctantly accepts the deal and lets Christus go. Sable makes his way to the town square to meet his colleagues. There, he meets Hort, an endowed fourth-year student, alongside Kudo, a lizard beast fallen, and two other suspicious-looking dudes who seem to be traveling with Kudo. Hort gets to find out how cool and mature Sable is even after he was insulted by Kudo. Before they leave, however, Hort senses a man staring at them from a cloak before merging into the crowd. A beast fallen, according to legend, are strong warriors who were gifted the spirit of an animal to harness more power. Later on, Christus, Hort, and Sable go get some skewers at a local diner nearby. While they munch on their food, Sable picks one of Hort's skewers and eats it. She suddenly flares up and apologizes for any tummy aches he may have in due time. After lunch, they all begin their journey. Just as Hort predicted, Sable gets a bad stomach ache on the way. By nightfall, they set up camp at the foot of a mountain. Hort creates a light source with her magic. Sable apologizes to Short for letting her get stuck with him on this boring trip. Hort tells him not to worry about stuff like that and then shows him her magic powers. Sable tells her the dire situation he's in at the moment. If he doesn't become a mage in time, he'll lose the only memories he has of his life and then be fully empty. Los Christus arrives from her break and overhears Sable talking to Hort. She asks him why he doesn't use his magic so often. Sable tells her it's because his magic spells are usually out of control. While she cooks dinner, Christus gives Sable and Hort a short lesson on magic spells. A few meters from their camp, in the trees, a couple of church hunters manage to track down the witch. They all decide to attack the Beast Fallen and the First before coming to Christus. The next day, Christus and her group arrive at a diner in a restaurant and stop over to eat breakfast. While they munch on their food, the two suspicious dudes on Kudo's team arrive at the same diner complaining about him. Hort and the others ask what's wrong, and they tell them that Kudo abandoned them and ran away with the map. Christus already recognizes that Kudo is only shouting at the boys so that he'll lead the witch hunters away from their location and save them. 
Christus gets her staff and heads out to find Kudo. After she's gone, Hort uses a locator spell on Christus's handkerchief and finds her exact location in the forest. The two immediately set out to find her and Christus. On their way there, they find Kudo's severed tail on the ground and things get serious. After finding Kudo's tail in the forest, they pick it up and find footprints leading forward. After carefully analyzing the footprints, Hort finds out they're dealing with a professional arbiter witch hunter. She advises them to run back to the diner and leave things to Christus. However, Sable tells her they can't leave a comrade behind. In one of the forest tree branches, Kudo rests up and accumulates his energy. He keeps wondering if his two subordinates escaped the witch hunters as he peers around for any traps in the trees. Suddenly, the branch under him snaps and sends him falling down to the spiny wooden traps underneath. Kudo lets out a scream which alerts the witch hunters of his location. Not too far away, Hort narrates her horrid experience meeting with an arbiter witch hunter in her younger days. They just finished clearing a village filled with witches and were about to execute her. However, she ran away from them and saved her own skin. Just then, they hear Kudo's screams and decide to save him. Meanwhile, Kudo keeps moving forward and falling into traps. Eventually, the witch hunter, Akka the Tyrant, catches up to him and faces him. Kudo distracts Tyrant with an attack magic spell, Solm, and makes a run for it. Tyrant catches up to him and bashes his stomach with his mace. The Tyrant finds Kudo's lizard abilities and decides to take him to the researchers in the church so he can be their lab rat. He calls for a cage and drags Kudo on the ground to his campsite. On the way, Kudo holds a branch and stops Tyrant from taking him forward. This pisses Tyrant off and he slices Kudo's hands off. Tyrant is about to take another swing at Kudo's head when Christus arrives with her scythe, Laudan. Kudo stays silent as Christus introduces herself as the Pact of the Infamous Scythe, Laudan. Tyrant starts the attack on Christus. Later on, Hort and Sable get to the battle site to help out. Christus takes advantage of the situation and beats Sable up. He holds Sable at knife point and orders Christus to drop her staff or else he'll kill Sable. Christus refuses at first, but then releases the staff after knowing there was nothing that could be done. Tyrant orders Sable to pick up the staff and return it back to him. He covers it with a black cloth and throws Sable forward to get the staff. Tyrant also witnesses Hort crying profusely. He tells her to spill out the real reason she was admitted to the Witch Academy. Apparently, Hort is a spy sent to the Academy by the church to learn the way of the witches. As a youngster, Hort suddenly started growing horns at a point. Ever since then, she's been cast aside as an outcast and a witch. One day, after she got her horns removed, she meets with the priest in the church and offers her life to serve the church's interests. The shameless priest assigns her the hardest job ever. He tells her to be a spy for the church as she gets admitted into the Royal Magic Academy of the Witches. So, Hort's double life begins. As she progresses through school, she gets recognized by the headmaster and was even considered for a promotion to become a mage for the kingdom. However, she couldn't go back on her promise to the church so she had to betray everyone she held, including Sable. After hearing her story, Sable still refuses to hate her. This moves Hort so much that she takes out Kudo's tail and uses the Flagus fire spell on it to burn the tyrant. Tyrant pushes Sable out of the way and defends himself from Hort's attack. He then faces Hort and prepares a fatal strike. The staff orders Sable to pick it up and strike Tyrant. Sable, without thinking twice, picks up the staff and destroys the entire forest around them. When it's all over, Christus scolds him and her staff for pulling such a foolhardy stunt. When everyone's back up, they continue their journey through the forest. Christus orders Kudo and the others to accompany her on their search to find the hidden village there to transform. Kudo asks for his severed tail, but Hort says she already used it to create the spell she used on Tyrant. Kudo is stupefied as he's lost a part of himself forever. Christus and her team camp near a river by nightfall to rest up and continue the journey the next day. While the others sleep, Hort meets with Sable by the river to apologize for leading them to the Arbiter earlier. Sable tells her he really doesn't care much about it. This pisses Hort off a little, and she tells Sable to care a little more about people's feelings. Sable keeps a straight face and continues staring into the river. Just then, Hortz decides to show him her antlers or horns. She tells him she's always been considered the child of a demon ever since her antlers appeared. To cleanse her soul from being tainted with a demonic spirit, she was sent to the Royal Magic Academy to spy on the church. However, 
As she increases her knowledge of magic and all things related, Hort gets to learn that she was a beast fallen. She also shows Sable how happy she was when he complimented Kudo on being a beast fallen. Sable says he just said how he felt toward him and didn't think it necessary to discriminate against Kudo. Hort gets so touched that she gives Sable a kiss on the cheek before going to bed. After she leaves, Christus appears behind Sable and tells him to tell her how he truly feels about Hort. Sable, however, tells her he's yet to understand the entire concept behind love. Christus laughs at him and goes to sleep. The next day, Christus and her team find out that the two suspicious dudes on Kudo's team were leaking information to the church. They had them arrested and taken back to the academy. Once they're gone, Christus gets down to business. She tells Kudo to regenerate his severed hand with his healing magic. However, Kudo tells her it's not that easy to do something like that in such a short time. Christus suggests using a healing magic spell from the Grimoire of Magic. However, Kudo refuses to do so as he fears the Grimoire's protection spell would destroy him completely. With that, there's only one thing left to do. Since Sable possesses enormous magic powers, Christus suggests Kudo and Sable kiss each other to get enough magic to heal himself. Since that's obviously not an option, Christus decides they'll touch each other's hands while she regulates the magic flow throughout the healing ritual. They begin the ritual in front of the people of the inn and Kudo regenerates his severed hand and tail in no time. The people go wild and sing praises to the mages for creating new limbs. After celebrating a little with the people, Christus and her mages leave the inn and arrive at a city after traveling for just a few more miles. On getting to the city, Sable gets bathed in mud by a racing wagon. Christus laughs at Sable and books an appointment at a bathing house. Soon, Sable and Kudo are in the men's part taking a bath. Sable asks him some questions and his inspiration behind learning magic. Kudo tells him he needs to be a certified mage so he can join the elite of the elite warriors in the church and mage army. Kudo says he used to be a freak show from the northern ruins dejected by the humans after it was destroyed up until the dragon conqueror king rescued him. Sable appreciates his inspiration behind becoming a mage. After telling his story, Kudo turns to him and asks him why he wants to be a mage. Before Sable could speak, Christus barges into the men's bathing room completely unclothed. Kudo and Sable are shocked to the bone as they recoil in embarrassment. The duo gets up and walks out of the room. Outside, they meet Hot completely naked as well. Kudo quickly removes Sable's towel and gives it to Hort, leaving him naked as well. Hort sees Sable's big schlong and runs away thinking it's a monster. Soon, they finish bathing and hit the road. Their journey forward from there was smooth as they rarely run into trouble and are able to help everybody they meet on the way. A few days later, Christus tells her team about her real mission to find the author of the legendary Grimoire. She then explains how bored she feels after living on magic for years on end. As she talks about what excites her, a little boy runs towards them, hides them near a tree stump, and activates a barrier. He tells them about his pursuer, a 300-pound panther beast fallen who sought to capture him and cut his feet. He figures out their location by listening for heartbeats and breaks them out of their barrier. Christus immediately springs into action and attacks the beast fallen. The beast fallen recognizes Christus and retreats from the fight. He tells Christus all he knows about her and leaves for the village. A few hours later, the little boy returns to his village gate with the mages to meet his father. On getting to the village gates, Lawais, the little boy they saved earlier on, tells the father of the village about how he was saved by Sable and his team from the beast fallen after him. The father of the village thanks them and advises them to get back to the academy. Apparently, Sable and his team had already gotten to the village Albus assigned to them earlier on. The patron of the village tells them the witch controlling the village left them two years ago without anybody to replace them. Sable wonders why Albus would send them on such a useless mission. Just then, Sable figures it out. Apparently, the headmaster sought to dispose of them, the bottom feeders of the school. They're about to believe the father and his lies when Christus catches up to them and calls out the father for his lies. Knowing that he's been caught, the father tells Christus to end him if she thinks he's betrayed them. However, Christus tells him to take them to the village instead so she can see the villagers and their reactions for herself. Father takes them into the quiet village. There, they find out about the tragedies that befell the village these past few years. Turns out the witch never took well to Liebers and always trapped the residents in the village with her. 
Christus and her group could tell from the scared state of the villagers there. Nonetheless, they keep moving forward. After the little village tour, Christus and her team arrive at the village inn to chill out from the stress. Christus suggests they kill the witch that abandoned her village and the headmaster as well. Clearly, this wasn't an option but Christus was understandably pissed at them for treating them and the villagers as expendable people. Hort suggests they get back to the church and ask for help. However, Sable thinks it will be too risky for them to do. So he suggests they all take the fight themselves and return the village to its former state. Kudo and the others tell him it'll be too risky as they'll be fighting an army all by themselves. Sable tells them he doesn't mind since he no longer cares if he lives or dies. Hearing this, Hort cries and tells Sable she'll never want him to die. She then runs out crying and leaves them behind. Sable rushes after her to apologize for making her cry. Sable goes to a chapel in the village to pray. There, she meets a little girl called Lily in a cloak who caught her crying. Hort cleans her tears and kneels down to talk to the little girl. The village's father makes his appearance and calls on Lily. Meanwhile, Christus makes it known to Kudo that she's ready to do anything to protect her people. After sending Lily out of the chapel, the father faces Hort and reveals his true identity as a witch hunter. Hort knows she's in trouble but it's now too late as the father binds her in metal wire and accuses her of betraying the church. Sable gets back to the inn and reports Holt's disappearance. Christus gets up and begins tracking Hort's location. She gets to the forest with Kudo and Sable and finds Hort's scent in a cave. They enter the cave, carefully watching out for traps. Kudo gets cold feet and leaves the cave with Christus and Sable in it. Outside the cave, he runs into the panther beast that has fallen chasing Laos earlier and faces him. The beast fallen tells Kudo to join his team and become one of theirs so he'll teach him magic. Kudo asks him where Hort was and the panther tells him he already ate her. Kudo gets very angry and challenges the panther. While they walk further inside the cave, Sable gets memory flashes that cause him to lose his balance. Christus tells him to take things easy to avoid getting injured. She tells him now that he has people that care about him, he shouldn't be too carefree about death. As they talk, a door in front of them opens and Sable is sucked into the room behind it. The father also launches his own attack on Christus and throws her into the same room as Sable. There, they find the witch that controlled the village smiling as she was bound in chains. Sable remembers the witch as the person who found him in the alleyway three years ago. The witch finally speaks up and tells Sable to come to her. Sable confronts her and asks for her identity. Christus also walks in front of Sable to protect him and gets blown away. The witch, who introduces herself as the author of the Grimoire Zero, tells the duo that she's gone to great lengths to make sure she finds Sable. Now that she's found him, she asks him to follow her and to become stronger and abandon his friends. However, Sable tells her he isn't ready to abandon his friends just yet. He has found refuge in their company and isn't ready to abandon it just yet. Just then, Christus kisses Sable and gets her magic refilled. She feels reinvigorated and faces the witch in front of her. Christus casts the flagist spell and directs the beast of fire toward the witch. However, the witch denies the spell and nullifies it. With surprised looks on Sable and Christus' faces, the witch lets her identity known as the Mud Black Witch and the author of the Grimoire Zero. She prepares one final attack against the two and stops midway to congratulate them on passing the test. Turns out the whole attack on them was just a facade meant to test the students' abilities to stand strong during adversities. Soon, Kudo and Hort join Christus and Sable in the cave as they also pass their respective tests. The blindfolded priest asks if Christus had seen through the whole thing and she says yes. Upon entering the village, Christus noticed how recent and new the houses and the scarecrow they hung up were, so she had suspicions they were being tested. By nightfall, Zero sends a letter to Albus informing her about her students that passed the test. Albus gets so happy as this was the first time any of her students actually passed such a test. To pay the arbiter for attacking her students, Albus puts a bounty on his head. The villagers from Zero's side host a party to celebrate the first students of the field program. Sable and his team eat and drink. Later on, they get to meet with Zero. Hort asks her why she sought to expel them initially. Zero tells them it's because their potential as great mages is just too strong. The crew gets nervous as they never thought so highly of themselves. Zero, who's already seen their potential. Zero lists out how all three's futures would turn out if they continued to train and hone their abilities. 
Then, she tells them she's assigning a store to each one of them to begin their three-year training program. Panther Beast Fallen and the father serve them food to enjoy. While they eat, they find out that the blindfolded father can actually see. However, the light affects his vision during the day. Also, Lily, who her thought was a little girl, is actually 20 years old. Hort is stupefied. After dinner, Sable and his crew walk to the inn. On their way, they see a white dragon in the sky approaching the village. When it lands, Kudo gets to see his hero again, the Dragon Conqueror King. Everyone welcomes the great hero to the village. The Dragon King delivers a letter to the three students from the headmaster. The letter was to inform the students that they have the freedom to use their magical powers without restriction. Kudo rushes to see his hero and asks if he still remembers him. The Dragon King does remember him. He tells him some words of encouragement and leaves afterward. The three get to the inn and find out the Dawn Witch would be there with them for a while. The students couldn't be happier. Later in the night, Dawn Witch meets with Zero to discuss her magic depletion. She tells him about Sable's infinite magic abilities and says he'll be glad to help her. Zero then tells Dawn Witch the history behind her and Sable. Apparently, Sable, after watching his mother get murdered right in front of him, sealed away his memories to forget the incident and has been dormant ever since. Christus asks her why she seeks to control Sable so much. Zero tells her it's because Sable is her nephew. Two months after getting to Zero's village, the three students had now taken a variety of jobs to suit their magic abilities. Horde is the village handy maiden who takes on different job requests. Sable is like the magic bank of the village as he supplies magic to those in need. He also operates a shop. Kudo uses his healing magic to heal the wounded when need be. One morning, Sable gets to his shop and refills Kudo and Hort's magic before letting them go on with their daily jobs. After they leave, Christus arrives at the shop to see him. During breakfast, she asks him why he stays holed up in his shop way too often. Sable tells her he needs to be indoors just in case someone needs his services. Not only that, but he also takes care of people's laundry for them, including Hort's. Krista's eyes open wide as she asks him if he cleaned Hort's underwear. Sable says he did and she faints. Clearly, Sable didn't know this was wrong. Still, Krista's warns him never to do such a thing again. She then tells him to shoot his shot with Hort as she likes him greatly. Sable tells him he feels obliged to help anyone he can. This makes Krista's remember what Zero told her about Sable's slave mentality. To change that, she sends him on an errand outside the house. On getting outside, Sable meets Laios outside and follows him to the forest. Together, they trek through the dense vegetation and get lost. Laois starts crying as he apologizes for leading Sable into the forest. Sable calms him down and blames himself. While they cry, Laois sees rodents running in a direction. He suddenly remembers Lily as a rodent beast fallen and follows the rodents to the chapel right around the outskirts of town. There, Laois finds his mother waiting for him. He gets a good scolding as his mom picks him up and goes back home. The father invites Sable into the church to meet Lily. The father removes her cloak and reveals her true self. Then, he tells her to cook them something for breakfast. Lily reluctantly cooks them some hot soup, bread, and honey. As they munch on their breakfast, the father tells Sable to learn the ropes of being a mage as quickly as he can as there's no telling what dangers may await him in the future. He asks him why he went to the forest with Lois. Sable answers that Christus sent him to fetch tea leaves for her. Father tells him he should have asked one of the adults and they'll have led him to the tree. After breakfast, Sable walks out of the church and finds Hort outside. They get into a little chit-chat and Sable finds a patch of blood on her sleeves. When asked what happened, Hort tells Sable the blood isn't hers. She went on her recent mission with a panther beast fallen. On the way, they ran into some wolves and had to fight them. During the fight, Hort accidentally hits the beast fallen with her magic. Now he's in intensive care. Sable, Christus, and Hort all rush toward the village hospital to help out. There, Zero kisses Sable and replenishes her magic so she could heal the panther and bring him back to normal. This works and the panther gets up and running in no time. Sable leaves shortly to meet with Laois as he remembers something. Zero, Panther, and Christus talk about Sable's progress as a mage. They think he's falling behind in strength compared to the other two. Zero and Panther tell Dawn Witch it's fine if he wants to stay stagnant as long as he supplies them magic. Dawn Witch throws a tantrum and tells them she can't stand for that. That evening, 
Dawn Witch asks Zero why she's hesitant to take Sable's magic. Zero tells her it's because she doesn't want to exploit her students. Christus tells her she'll wilt and die if she doesn't do anything about it soon. However, Zero seems to be pretty okay with that as long as she'll be dying with the one she loves. In the meantime, Albus sends one of the Beast Fallen teachers to go supervise Sable in the village he's at. Sable also gets to Lawa's house and invites him to go out to the forest with him again. Kuda wakes up deep in the night asking for his next patient. He remembers the previous day when he had to use up his magic to heal 13 people who were suffering from an infection. He gets downstairs for the first time after hours and finds out everything he missed out on while he was asleep. Sable finds a way to blame himself and apologizes for causing Kudo to sleep off. Kudo asks them if the Panther Beast Fallen survived Hort's attack. Hort tells him he did. Eventually, a mini-argument breaks out and Christus has to step in. Since they all messed up their jobs somehow, Kirstis asks them how they plan to make things better. While Sable tells her he'll start by going out more, Hort and the Lizard Beast Fallen keep fighting. Kirstis tells the duel they both have to see Zero the next day for a lesson on becoming a mage. The next day, Kirstis dismisses her three students to go their different ways. They make their first stop at the library and meet with Zero who tells them about a forbidden library in the north. While Hort is psyched to visit there one day, Sable and Kudo take a hard pass on going there. Zero decides to take the reins and teach Kudo a thing or two about canceling magic spells. She takes Hort outside and teaches her how to cancel some spells. Soon, the others join to watch Zero teach them all how to control their magic powers. After demonstrating her powers a little, Zero collapses. Sable picks her up and asks if he could give her some of his magic. However, the magic transfer technique doesn't work out. He takes her to her house and places her on her bed. Sable asks her why she refuses to kiss him and get more magic. Zero tells him she doesn't want to rob him of his magic. Sable asks her if she knew about his mother, but Zero tells her she doesn't. Sable then picks up a book on her shelf and checks it out. He finds out it's similar to a grimoire and asks who wrote it. Zero tells him his father, the 13th, was the one who wrote the book. Soon, Panther Beast Fallen arrives with some food and supplies for Zero. He gets to her bed and thanks Sable for taking care of her in his absence. Sable leaves the two of them alone and gets to the forest with Laos. They walk and play around for a while before getting to a training ground. While they walk, Sable remembers Zero's last words to him before he left earlier. Apparently, Zero told him to take being a mage seriously if he wants to make it in life. Sable snaps back to life when they get to a small field filled with red flowers. Laos gets very eager to train with Sable. However, before they begin the session, a purple spiny thing appears and floats in front of them. The thing shoots spines toward them both and hits Laios. Laios collapses from losing too much blood. Unable to use any healing magic, Sable carries him and races toward the village. He stops over somewhere in the forest and lays down seriously thinking of what to do before Laios passes on. Just as he's about to give up, a bird from Christus approaches and tells him not to give up at all and that Christus was on her way to him. Sable perseveres and gets to Zero, Panther, and Christus. Later on, Sable and Laos both healed up. Christus named the spinny thing a rendon of disaster that waits in trees to catch prey and suck their blood. Sighting one in the forest would mean someone intentionally set it free there. Panther set up a meeting with the wolf representative from Albus and the father. They try to figure out who had set that thing loose in the forest. If the problem isn't nipped in the bud, it could cause way bigger problems than normal. While discussing their plan to capture the perpetrator who released the remnant of the disaster, Zero joins them and follows them on their hunt by midnight. The headmaster's beast fallen servant, Hold'em, meets the students for the first time and introduces himself. The students recognize him for his nasty abilities and force him to dismiss them. On getting back inside the house, Christus asks him why he's truly there in the village. She suspects he was the one who released the remnant of disaster to the jungle. Hold'em denies ever releasing the remnant into the forest and tells Christus that he's there to just supervise the students and ensure they don't go astray. The three students get to the village's water supply. Sable tells Kudo and Hort that he's made his resolve to become a mage just like them. While Hort rejoices for him, Christus walks by to say hi and tells them to get home quickly. Sable asks his colleagues to teach him how to cast magic spells and he gives them some of his magic in return. Hort asks him if he would kiss her to transfer magic to her. However, Sable disappoints her and tells her he wouldn't. 
Hork gets a mini freak out and jumps all over the place until Holdem comes by and invites them over to his house. Before they go, Leo's dad asks to see him alone. When the two are alone, he tells Sable to stay away from Leos in the meantime. Sable understands and promises to get stronger with time so he'll be able to take him out again. The dad promises to teach Leos to be more careful later on. After the dad leaves, Tyrant sneaks behind Sable and captures him. As he transports him, Sable remembers the last moments with his mother before she was killed. Apparently, after locking her son in a cage to protect him, a deadly witch attacked their home during the war and killed Sable's mom right in front of him. Then, the witch holds Sable up and begins sucking magic from him. She sucks so much magic that it begins to overload her body. Sable kills the witch and seals his memory. Tyrant stops after hearing Sable scream and slaps him back to reality. Hort and Kudo arrive moments later to free their friend. Christus, who's also in the forest, uses her staff to clean up the forest. She finds someone rotting alive and proceeds to help him. Kudo cuts a piece of his tail and gives it to Hort so she can use it in her Flagis spell. This doesn't work as the tyrant blocks the attack. In the fight, Sable gets freed. He holds a knife to Tyrant's throat and threatens to slit it if he doesn't stop fighting them. In the meantime, Christus finds Holdem sleeping on the floor somewhere around the village. Turns out the kids had put him to sleep after finding out Sable was abducted. Christus asks him whether or not he's trying to test them, but Holdem tells her he would never do anything to harm Sable. She asks him what he did, and he says he used the tyrant to attack the students. At that moment, the tyrant knocks the students down and hits their limbs with his mace. As he gloats at his victory, the father of the village arrives and cuts his hands and legs with his thin metal wires. Knowing that he's been outnumbered, the tyrant surrenders to his enemy and allows himself to be captured. Soon, Panther, Zero, Hold'em, and Christus arrive at the scene. Christus and Hold'em try to defend the tyrant and give them the suspicion that they knew or hired the tyrant to do this dirty job for them. Nonetheless, they still take him to the hospital for treatment and talk about what they would do to him. Christus labels Hold'em as an incompetent servant, so they don't think they hired the Arbiter. They table down their lack of manpower and wonder what they could do to make things work. Arbiter wakes up and spouts some nonsense. However, Hold'em tells him to zip it if he wants to live without his limbs. The next day, Hort and the other students are told to forgive Tyrant for his wrongdoings. She freaks out and keeps telling them how many innocent people the Tyrant had killed. Still, they refuse to eliminate him. Hort keeps telling them to take him out, but they tell her he's still pretty useful to them. Hort then decides she's going to have him work hard labor in Panther's Bar so they can supervise and monitor him. Holden leaves the village and returns to the academy after seeing the state of the students. After seeing him off, Christus heads over to the students' quarters. She's about to knock and enter but she stops and eavesdrops on Hort and Sable's conversation. Sable asks Hort how to know if he feels a certain way for someone. Hort gets nervous and tells him a person who's in love with another would always want to be special to that person he loves. Sable admits that he does feel that way with Professor Christus and not her. Hort realizes Sable might not like her the way she likes him, but she handles the rejection like a champ and even decides to be the middleman to connect Sable and the professor together as she promises to say a word or two to Christus. Before leaving for the day, she asks for a magic refill from Sable. However, as he's about to do the transfer, Sable suddenly remembers the time he overloaded his mom's killer magic. He stops the magic transfer and leaves to see Zero. Hort gets to the river to tell Christus about Sable's feelings for her. Christus warns her not to confer people's feelings without informing them first. Hort apologizes and asks Christus if she plans on running away now that one of her students has fallen for her. Christus tells her she won't run and would rather just pretend she didn't hear anything. As they talk, they hear a scream that turns their attention away from their discussion. Now at Zero's apartment, Sable gets to discuss his repressed memories with her. Why did he suddenly remember them back when he was abducted? Zero tells him he probably remembers because his life was in danger. She then explains a few other facts about his father, 13, and her. Apparently, to 13, Sable was nothing but an infinite magic source to him. When Sable's mother caught up to his plans, she fled, got tracked down, and was killed. Zero reveals to Sable that she's his aunt. To obtain a world for witches, Thirteen thought it necessary to have an infinite source of magic. Sable understands this and tells her about the incident he had with Hort earlier on. Zero decides to teach him magic stabilization. 
she extends her hands and holds sables. Then, they transfer magic to one another. While they do this, another deafening scream is heard from the distance. However, they choose to ignore it. Christus and Hort, on the other hand, get to the inn and find Tyrant holding down the boy Christus, found in the forest the previous night. The boy was now out of his disfigured state and sought to attack everybody in sight. Christus uses Laudens to subdue and hospitalize him. Lady Heartful, the innkeeper, shows her face and checks up on the others. Christus is happy to see the lady as she serves Tarrant in the bound kid lunch. Christus tells them about the pawns of the church. In other words, the boy was left alone to find and take out the witches. Kudo makes it known he doesn't feel any mercy for him. However, Christus teases him. While the others argue, Heartful and Tarrant talk about his priorities. Does he continue being a killer or is he now a bodyguard of the village? Tyrant gets bashful as he tries to use his power on the women. However, Christus uses her staff, Laudens, to let him know they don't tolerate violence. A few hours later, Panther talks with Kudo and Hort about the best methods to extract information from the boy. Bothy suggests they torture information from him. Kudo and Hort suggest they use another means. Just then, the father comes by and wakes the boy up. Almost immediately, the boy attacks them but the father restrains him. When everyone is present in the building, the father asks Christus to make the room dark enough for him to remove his blindfolds. Christus makes the room just like that so the interrogation begins. The father asks a few questions and uses the captive's facial expressions to figure out whether he was lying or not. The questioning reveals that the church may have bought the remnants of the disaster and placed them in the forest. Christus advises they keep the boy in the village for a little more time to really find out what the church is after. After eavesdropping on their meeting, Short walks to the school and finds Tarrant teaching the kids how to make knots and stuff. She suddenly remembers all the bad things he's done in the past and wonders what he could have planned at the moment. Heartful invites everyone, including Tyrant and Hort for fishing by the river. Hort reluctantly accepts the invitation and follows them. In the final scene, Kudo finds out the transfer to Wenius has been postponed. Kudo takes the kid out on a stroll to discuss the motivation behind his actions. After asking him a few questions, Kudo is convinced the kid's been brainwashed by the church into believing all witches and beast fallen folks are bad and should be purged off this world. Kudo decides to change his mind by taking him to Lily the Rodent's restaurant. On getting there, Lily serves him a hearty meal and the kid eats to his fill with Kudo. Surprisingly, the kid enjoys the food and appreciates the efforts put into cooking it. After eating, Kudo exposes Lily, who prepared his food, as a beast fallen. The kid is surprised that food that good would be cooked by a mouse. After eating their food, he thanks Lily and leaves shortly. On getting back to his nice room, Kudo introduces himself and leaves him to himself. By nightfall, Sable shows his colleagues the new method Zero taught him earlier to control his magic. The others try it but find it way too hard to master. While they fiddle around with magic, Sable approaches Christus and asks to use her staff for an experiment he learned earlier on. Christus grants him access to use the staff. Before he leaves, however, Sable confesses his love to her and shocks everybody. Hort quickly jumps in to control the cringe situation. A few hours past midnight, the kid dreams about the hard life he had in the past. Apparently, he was captured as an orphan and sent to a training camp to learn to kill witches. The kid, who's later identified as Katie, jumps up when Hort and the Lady Heartful arrive at his room to invite him for their fishing trip. On their way there, Hort gives him a little lesson about making and keeping promises to loved ones. Caddy's stomach growls loudly on the way and they all chuckle at him. Sable's the first person Christus sees that morning. He serves her some tea and shows her his experiment in a bottle. As it turns out, Sable discovered a way to infuse potions with magic that could be used to replenish depleted magic. Christus asks him how he found out about this and he says he read his father's grimoire. To test out the experiment, Sable pours a drop of it on Laudan. After tasting the potion, Laudan takes the whole bottle and drinks the entire thing. This could only mean he liked the potion. Sable gets up and leaves to make other potions. Rewinding to the younger days of the Arbiter, it is revealed that he had always had a knack for traps as a youngster and would sometimes create effective traps to impress his dad. However, since his dad never once appreciated him for the traps, Arbiter went rogue and took the path of darkness and destruction. Tyrant's reflection on the past is brought to an end when Lady Heartful tells him a little bit about herself and how she'll act in certain situations. 
Tyrant reflects on the things she said and concludes he just wasn't built that way. Horde approaches him to ask if he had fallen for the teacher already. Tyrant denies such a thing and laughs at the thought of it. At about that time, Katie walks to the river in a horrid state. Turns out his stomach ache was something more than that as he turns into a monster right in front of everybody. Tarrant quickly springs into action and kicks him away from the kids and the teacher. He tries punching Katie but gets his hands severed off. Hort quickly starts a spell to subdue the monster in front of them. However, this doesn't work out well for them. Tyrant tells them to leave the scene while they still can so he can hold Katie off. However, Hort and Kudo refuse to leave him to die. While Hort casts her spell, Tarrant holds Lady at bay. When she's done, she seals him inside a building. However, Katie, who's now a monster, breaks out of the seal and keeps moving toward them. Tyrant holds the monster and buys some time for Hort to cast a spell strong enough to kill Caddy. Katie, however, impales Tyrant. At about that time, Hot finishes her spell and destroys Katie. Kudo uses his healing spell to heal Tyrant's wounds. At about that time, Caddy's body breaks up into little tiny pieces of alligator lizards. Christus arrives just in time and uses her staff to eat up the lizards before they could do any harm to Tarrant and the students. After the incident with Lady, Hort, Sable, and Kudo gather at Candy's grave to talk about their future. Apparently, they regret not being able to save Caddy when it mattered. Kudo suggests they stay off Sybil's magic supply in the meantime and learn to manage and perfect their magic spells. As they discuss, the Dragon Conqueror King arrives on his white dragon to inform the students they're to return to Weniest immediately before the village turns to a battleground. After hearing the news, the students get to Zero at once to confront the decision made by the headmaster. Sable tells Zero about a way they could trap the enemy troops without damaging or harming the people. He brings out his magic potion and tells them they can create traps with the magic trapped inside. Zero gets very impressed and promises to rethink her decision to send them back to the academy. Just then, Cursitas visits them and begs Zero to allow her students to fight in the war with them. After much begging, Zero allows them to fight in any war the church is bringing toward the village. When she receives the news, Albus gets very happy and proud of her students' decision to stand and fight for justice. Elsewhere, Tarrant and the father, being former arbiters of the church, reminisce over old times and talk about how ironic life has been to them. They're about to fight with the organization that hired them. They talk in parables for the rest of the scene until Tyrant gets up and leaves to get to the teacher. Hort and Kudo test out the magic potions Sable created and are impressed. They ask him how he thought of the idea. Sable tells them about his father's real identity 13. Kudo hugs Sable and appreciates him for telling him the truth. They also tell him not to expect any special treatment as he's still one of them. In the meantime, Tyrant gets to the inn and finds out the kids had cooked a surprise meal to thank him for saving them earlier on. Tyrant is shocked to the bone as he never once got such treatment like that before in his life. Lady Heartful had to put food in his mouth before he got back to his senses. After the meal, Lady Heartful gets some time alone with Tyrant. Tyrant, in his own way, almost admits that he likes Lady Heathful. However, when she seems to be catching on to his feelings, he ups and leaves for Panda's bar. There, he finds Hort taking a drink alone and joins her. She tells him about the trap models Sable was using to stop the army from the church. She subtly threatens to keep him alive if that'll mean tormenting him for all the lives he's taken. Following their discussion, Hort leaves the tyrant to gnash his teeth and think about his life decisions. Christus and the father talk about the recent development of the students. The next day, the whole village gets down to building the traps to use for the church army. As the students get busy thinking of less harmful ways to set up the traps, Panther and Christus can only hope their enemies are weak enough to be defeated by the traps. The father budges into their discussion and tells them the church's army usually consists majorly of farmers and healthcare workers. While they discuss, Lily, the rodent rushes to call Panther to come to help her meal prep. Seeing her cute state, Christus hugs and cuddles her. The father steps in and pushes Christus away from Lily. Lily gets back to the kitchen and Panther follows her. Christus asks the father why he helps Lily that much. The father says he's convinced Lily likes him. Christus recoils from the father's confidence and teases him while at it. Back in the Wenia's academy, Hold'em and the headmaster make it known that they won't be directly fighting the church. Instead, they would rather use their armies to turn the extremists on their side. After finding out the size of the enemy army, Faria, the ruler of the holy city, Adios, 
sends an emergency message to Taurus. On receiving the message, Taurus tells the messenger to fly back to the north under protection from his army. Leo says his goodbyes to Sable as he was leaving the village in preparation for the war. With all the villagers gone, Sable decides to give Zero a large chunk of his magic so she can have enough to stand and fight the church. Zero accepts the transfer and gets lots of magic from Sable in a very short time. After getting all the magic she needed to fight the church, Zero names him the Abyss Sorcerer. Christus tracks the enemy troops to a part of the forest and finds out they summoned a demon to fight them. She prepares herself and her staff, Laudens, for a fight, and so the war begins. As the troops from the church inch towards the village, Lily sends her possessed rodents to attack them. The frightened soldiers press on into the traps the villagers set for them. The traps instantly sever their limbs and leave them to meet their demise. Just then, green rain falls from the heavens and restores their severed limbs. In another part of the forest, another battalion of church soldiers falls into traps and gets burned this time. Still, green rain falls from the heavens and restores their skin back to normal. The general recognizes the mercy that the witches just showed them so he advises them to retreat. However, the demon they summoned keeps moving forward to the village. Zero informs her team about the demon-possessed beast fallen backing the church's army. She tells them the battle has just begun and that they should make their resolve to win strong. In the meantime, the church's beast fallen army, led by a demon-possessed beast fallen, had captured Lily somewhere in the trees. They contemplate either eating her right there or taking her to the village and then eating her right in front of the villagers. At that moment, the father strikes. He uses his thin metal wires to cut the beasts holding Lily captive and severs their boss's hands. The demon regenerates his hand and prepares himself for a fight with the father. A few meters away, Panther takes out all the other members of his army. However, the demon-possessed individual uses his magic to revive all of them. With their backs against each other, Panther and the father prepare themselves to fight the demon army right there and prevent them from entering the village. As the church troops approach the village entrance, they fall into the several traps placed there by the villagers. However, they keep multiplying in numbers and force the students to use offensive magic on them. For a few moments, they manage to keep the enemy at bay. The students seem to be having fun finally showing off their new magic spells. While Hort and Sable attack, Kudo uses his healing magic to protect them. At one point in the fight, Panther arrives with the demon-possessed boss of the church's beast-fallen army. He slashes the demon but still doesn't manage to kill him. Zero steps in to help him out. She unleashes a spell that summons the Gate of Decay to open up the souls of the dead so they can devour the foul demon plaguing their village. In a matter of minutes, thousands of decayed corpses rise up from the ground and eat up the flesh of the demon boss. With their boss gone, the church's army retreated to their base. Elsewhere, Albus, Hold'em, and a few other officials lie and wait for the next wave of the church's attack. Soon, the church sends the remnants of disaster toward their camp. One of the stronger mages there tries burning them with her fire, but this doesn't work as the remnants develop wings and attack the people there. The bishop and his other officials make a run for it. The head bishop, Bishop Idemer, gets caught as the perpetrator who snuck into the remnants of the disaster. The remnants clock towards him to eat him up. However, Christus arrives in the nick of time and uses her staff, Lawton to suck up the remnants of the disaster. She inches toward the wicked bishop and forces him to eat anything she found in Caddy's stomach before he died. After swallowing it, things get back to normal and the war ends. In a few months' time, Sable and his colleagues return to the academy as they complete their three-year training arc in the village. Headmaster Albus happily presents them with their diplomas and congratulates them for passing the test and becoming mages. Now that they're fully-fledged mages, Albus promises to find good jobs for them. The three students return to the village to gather their remaining things before returning to Wenius. Zero gives Sable his father's journal as a parting gift. He thanks her for the hospitality and goes to bed. The next day, the village members and all those who help them say their goodbyes as the three students go on their next adventure in Wenias with the Dragon Conqueror King.